know, on the bright side, um, with the new administration, a lot of people at the government have kind of felt like this is now a no bullshit environment is the way okay. one person put it. And so, you know, we have been seeing some processes go faster than they otherwise would have okay. before this. Energy demands around the world and here in the United States are creating a renaissance for nuclear power. And companies like Allo Atomics, headquartered here in Austin, Texas, are producing innovative new kinds of nuclear reactors, specifically variants of small modular reactors that are poised to help meet the growing energy demands of a modern world. And the timing could not be better. Thank you, President Trump. This is a huge day for the nuclear industry. Uh, mark this day on your calendar. Uh, this is going to turn the clock back on over 50 years of overregulation of an industry. Uh, America has always, American greatness has always come from innovation, and we were very innovative. We led post World War II in all things nuclear, uh, but then we've been stagnated. We've choked it with uh, overregulation. Uh, today, Will is going to walk us through a series of four executive orders. Uh, each of these uh, help attack. Uh, separate issues that have held back this industry. And with us today, we've got a number of CEOs from the industry representing some of our largest nuclear providers, but also a big change. This is a time when, when capital and competition has finally come to this industry. We've got venture capital, we've got startups coming into all aspects of small modular nuclear, and we've also got an EO that's talking about the importance of us having a secure supply chain of being able to get that fuel load here in the United States as opposed from, from foreign sources. Now, I recently had a chance to sit down with the CEO of Allo Atomics, Matt Lozak, and talk about this changing regulatory environment, the renewed interest by the Trump administration on nuclear energy, some of the pros and cons that that entails, and also the challenges and opportunities of the energy demands for things like AI data centers and how Allo Atomics is well poised to meet this challenge. So let's hear a little bit more from Matt Lozak. I mean, it, it looks like you're generally on track with where you want to be right now. Um, I, w I do want to you know, bring up this, this point is when you started your, your grand opening here just six months ago to now, the world has kind of changed a lot. We've had an election. We have a new administration. Uh, it seems to me that they are much more focused on pushing nuclear power nuclear uh, uh, you know, energy. They're also trying to help work with companies like you. Uh, what has that been like and what do you think about what that means for what your business is as, as we move forward? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. It's yeah. been a bit of a roller coaster with, with yeah. the new administration, but um, it, lots of good stuff mm -hmm. um, and some potentially challenging things. Mm -hmm. So you know, on the bright side, um, with the new administration, a lot of people at the government have kind of felt like this is now a no bullshit environment is the way okay. one person put it. And so, you know, we have been seeing some processes go faster than they otherwise would have okay. before this. Um, on the flip side, you know, for example, uh, if you're following the markets in the past two days or three days, <laughs> you know, it's a tumultuous time. Yeah. And tariffs could be a major influence for lots of deep tech companies. Mm -hmm. um, for us, there's considerations around where we source our uranium, mm -hmm. where we source our stainless steel, mm -hmm. where we source our sodium, things like that. Um, so it's a little bit early to tell. Uh, this has just been a few days right. since this big announcement, but those are two examples. Um, there's lots more, but you know, ups and downs. Okay. Well, you know, in addition to the federal government, we also have Texas, and Texas itself seems to be really embracing nuclear. And I think they just had a Texas nuclear summit earlier, uh, yeah. or late last year. And one of the things you were mentioning fuel, it sounded like they said that they want to do fuel from Texas. So what is up with that? Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, there's a lot of potential in Texas for nuclear across the board. Um, there is the opportunity to potentially mine uranium here in Texas, hmm. um, but it's really, it's a lot more than that. Okay. So, you know, hmm. the, the governor, uh, Greg Abbott, he wants to put a lot of funding and support behind companies like ours who are headquartered here and doing a lot of exciting stuff in Texas. And it's really nicely aligned because there's also a lot of the AI stuff happening here. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the $500 billion project that Altman and Trump announced, Stargate, um, one of the uh, two major developers behind that program is based here. Mm -hmm. And that's where their first development is happening. And so this is very exciting because that level of demand is just unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So the idea of potentially doing you know, tens of gigawatts of new generation capacity mm -hmm. in a time frame of five or 10 years 
is just, you know, for a customer who's willing to pay a premium is such a uniquely positive environment mm. to be attempting to create a nuclear plant factory. Mm. So you know, we're very fortunate that the stars are aligning right now in terms of timing, um, product market fit, um, government support, uh, social, political, uh, and kind of, you know, just social yeah. acceptance. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, everything is just really aligning nicely. Yeah, well, you know, along with the AI thing, when we met six months ago, I asked you about powering AI centers, and it, I, it didn't sound like that was something that was 100% on, the, on your, your, your thought process at mm. that time. But now, mm. six months later, you're talking about it. We see it in the news. Mm. Microsoft is trying to refurbish Three Mile Island for power. You mentioned uh, with the open AI, just down the road here, uh, Giga Texas is putting in not only one, but two Cortexes, and they're putting $10 billion worth of uh, in infrastructure in right now. So has that changed in six months, and has that changed your business model? Mm. Um, it's definitely evolved it. So uh, when we started the company, we made a matrix of all the possible target markets we could go after. Yeah. And we kind of scored them, and we said, okay, what makes sense, and all these you know, different parameters. And data centers were on there, but um, you know the momentum in the past year, especially, has been incredible to see. And really, with our engagement with the NRC, there comes a point when you have to hone in mm -hmm. on a on a product. Yeah. And it was kind of a question of what is our timing with NRC, and what's the timing with the markets. And we talked to a lot of possible customers. And we talked to the NRC. And what we really coalesced on was the Allo Pod, mm. which is that purpose-built product for these AI data centers. And that's been the kind of major help for us to actually go deeper with the NRC and say, okay, we have a site, we have a customer, we have a product, let's go, let's make this real. Um, and honestly, I think that's a big part of why nuclear kind of struggled in the past 20 years is you know, often you didn't have some of those pieces. Mm. So maybe the NRC wasn't yet ready to regulate advanced reactors. Um, or maybe the customers were not lining up and placing orders uh, for things that had not yet been built. Mm. Maybe the public wasn't yet supportive of it. Maybe the investors weren't ready to give the money to the companies trying to do it. Mm. But right now, we're at this insanely unique point in time where this is, for the first time possible, I think, in history, to create a nuclear reactor and plant factory. Um, it, you know, the promising thing is once this is set up, the potential is basically limitless. I mean, you know, the challenging thing is getting the capital and the people and everything in place to set up the factory. That's mm -hmm. a huge lift. And data centers are such a unique wedge into kind of creating this, bootstrapping the factory because of the rapid growth of the demand and the high willingness to pay. But once this is set up, the really exciting thing is the data center market is only 1% of electricity use in America. Mm. And so once you get it set up, you can then go after so many other markets and you've then come down the first of a kind to nth of a kind cost curve. Mm. And so you're well poised to just deploy these by the thousands. Mm. 